Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the next episode of my series of Behind the Raw, where I take you with me onto Lightroom Classic and I talk you through my workflow, the edit, my thoughts on a particular image, and any mistakes that I would have made so that you don't have to. Now, this week it's the turn of my trip that I had to Pine Island, and what an incredible trip, action packed. You know, there was mishaps, there was everything that could possibly happen within that trip. And if you haven't seen it, actually, I'll link to it up here. But one of the images that I had was one where I had of the rainbow. And it was a rainbow that kept coming and going, kept coming and going. And even when Thomas had arrived, you know, it was there for his arrival. So we had it in our shots. But I'm going to pick an image and I'm going to use a feature within Lightroom Classic now, which is the generative remove. Because one of the problems with this location is that you have constant ever-present telegraph poles or power lines that run right across the frame and it is a nightmare to be able to edit generally but by using the new AI it does seem to do a much easier job so I'm going to jump onto Lightroom Classic now and I'll talk you through how I edit the image let's go Okay, so here we are with the image that I'm going to talk you through in my edit. And as you can see, it is a stunning, stunning scene. However, you have this, which is one of two that are there from a telegraph pole point of view or power line. And it runs from this point here. And if I zoom in, you'll also see that it runs along the back as well here. And that is a nightmare as far as it's concerned with images. Now you can leave them in, but it, they don't look nice. I don't really like leaving them in, but sometimes you've got no choice because it can be quite difficult to remove them. Now, if you watch the episode, I complained <laughs> about these things uh, in a separate segment, you know, so a rant was done. I won't go through the rant again right now, but nonetheless, they're a pain in the backside anyway to have. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach this image in two ways. So number one, I'm going to edit it like I normally would. And then number two, I'm going to talk you through how I'm going to remove them. So first thing I want to look at here is my overall image. And I can see that I've taken it at a 1 25th of a second, it's at F10 ISO 100, and I was at 16 mil. Now, I underexposed the image here because I was using the, the camera handheld, and I knew that I wanted to make sure that I didn't blow any of the brightness within here. But what that meant then, basically, is that I do have some noise within the image, but I'll deal with that in here as well during the edit. Now, first and foremost here, I'm going to go into my um, crop panel and I'm going to change this now to a 16.9 because number one I don't really like all of this brush that's down the front here and then number two if I bring this up here it now allows it to be more balanced overall on the image because again I was handheld on this I could have got into this but I would have fallen down below and I didn't really want to do that so that's the first thing that I'll do second is I'm going to try and mitigate as much as I can so I'm going to try and remove this here on the right hand side just purely by bringing my crop in to the image here. It also it makes no purpose of doing it because the um, rainbow falls off. It wasn't fully complete over on that side. So by doing it here, it now creates a sense of, you know, it could go on further within the image. So I think that from a crop point of view will be okay. Um, so now I have my image here. If I go to uh, fit the screen, we'll see that better. And now I'm going to go through my standard edit. So first and foremost, I'm going to look at my histogram as I normally would do, because that's going to tell me what I can and what I can do within the image. So I'm I'm going to bring up my exposure ever so slightly so that's going to expose overall on the image so 0.5 of a stop here I think is fine on that now on the highlights I'm going to bring those up again slightly as well just to make that image a bit more brighter on the highlight area on the shadows if I bring them all the way up you see all the detail that comes out here but I want to have a bit of depth within the image so I'm not going to go all the way up here I am going to lift it slightly so by point by by 60 whites I've got a bit of leeway here I'm going to play with those bring those up and then blacks they're already dark I'm going to bring those up as well now what I do want to do is I want to add in some contrast into the image. So if I add in some contrast here, you start to see the image now starting to work better. Then I'm also going to bring in my dehaze. So if I bring in my dehaze here, you now start to see that the uh, colors start coming up more. But you've got to be careful because if you bring in the dehaze too much, you see you get a kind of a false image overall. But for me, I think around about 23 here is perfectly fine. And I'm just going to then add a small bit of vibrance onto that because you do have a natural vibrance within the overall image. And then finally, I'm just going to click on my um, white balance and I'm going to hit a gray cloud here. And I'm going to see, does that change? It doesn't really. So that's fine as far as I'm concerned for this image. Now, 
that image I could be done but as you can see these telegraph poles are quite horrible overall so what I am going to do on this is I'm going to remove them so if you come up here into your remove tools and if you look here on the left hand side you have remove you have your heel and then also you have your generative AI so all I'm going to do on that is I'm going to take a broad brush actually I'm going to make this brush bigger so I'm just going to undo that so I'm going to make my brush bigger. Oops, do it this way. Okay, I'm gonna make my brush bigger so that I can cover more of the area. And now I'm just going to go and sweep across all of this here. And I'm not even being particular as you can see, and we'll see now how the generative AI gets on with that. I wanna give it a small bit of room so that it has enough to be able to play with. And now if I go into this, on the right hand side here, I click on subtract and then I can click on apply. And by doing that, that now is going to go through what it thinks it's going to go through to be able to help to remove those. And as always, it'll give you three different options as well to be able to understand what's going to work. So if we look at this one here, you see that the lines are gone. It has actually kind of created clouds, but we'll have a look at the other one. That could work, but we'll have a look at another one. So the second one here, not much of a difference on that. And then the third one, a slight variance on that so if we go back and have a look there's your number two here is the first one and then here is the third one but what it effectively has done is has removed all of the telegraph poles so it's quite straightforward in the past you'd have to go in and select that and then try and mimic a cloud that was close by you always kind of ended up with something that didn't look right in the image but if I come back out of that now and I say okay there are no signs now whatsoever that there were um, any telegraph poles within that image. So I think from an image point of view, effectively it could be done. Now I mentioned earlier on at the very beginning that I do have noise and you can see it here in the background on these gorgeous mountains that are in the background here, but you can see it because the colors on the rainbow are quite vibrant, but just above that you see that in the clouds. So if I go down here into detail and I click on denoise, what that's going to do is it's going to load up and then going to tell me what is it going to apply? Is it going to change it to be able to remove that noise? So if I go in here and I have a look at this area as an example, so you see that you have the noise here and now enhance it's actually removed it. So, you know, it's not actually going to be there. And now that has removed all of the noise that's there. It makes the image a lot cleaner. If I zoom back out again now, you look at the overall image here, I think it works quite well. So in I think in regards to this image here, excuse me i think this can work very very well overall it is something that you know use the tools that are there now lightroom has come on leaps and bounds to be able to help us to be able to remove scenarios like this and it was built for things like this now you do have dedicated things in other programs so the likes of luminar will have for power lines and it'll actually work around itself specifically for power lines but now as you see on this final image here there is not really much uh, view or visibility you'd never know they were there if i hadn't shown you that they were there so yeah that's the image here from this one quite a straightforward uh, edit thank you very much as always for joining i hope you enjoyed my insight into this if it's your first time on the channel please do consider hitting the subscribe button give me a like give me a comment and until the next time schlong gefall mm -hmm.